Okay, in this video, I'm going to walk you through doing some simple analyses, repeated measures analyses in Python. So you can see how cool it is, and we're going to use Jupyter Notebook. So a couple things I want you to do. First, I want you to get the um, data file from the Google Drive and copy it to wherever you're doing your Jupyter Notebook stuff, wherever you set that up. So for me, it was TCNJ ERP Lab. Uh, stats and then I created a Python directory and I sort of dumped it in there. So you want this file RTQ behavioral data. So this is a recognition test question. So you remember we asked whether it was old or whether it was new and this is the behavioral data. So like, you know, hits, false alarms, the proportions of each and the response time. So you want that data file to be in your directory. Then I want you to launch your Jupyter Notebook. So when you launch your Jupyter Notebook, you should be in your directory and you should see the data file wherever you've put it. So that's number one. If you don't have the data file, it's going to give you some errors. Okay, so now we're ready. So we're going to go New Notebook and we're going to select Python 3. And you're going to input your password. And this is what it's going to look like. You have a line here which is waiting for some Python code. So the first thing we're going to do, and by the way, I've already run through all this stuff, so I'm copying and pasting, so you'll just have to bear with me, but this will speed up the, the video a lot faster. So, and you can pause wherever you need to to copy the commands and things like that. So let me explain briefly what this does. So first, we're going to import the Penguin uh, package, and it uh, we're going to call that at various times to do functions or analyses, and so the PG will will reference this package. And then we're going to import pandas, and pandas is part of Python that allows you to do all kinds of cool stuff with um, data. And so it's just sort of PD. So like when you see PD down here, it's using pandas to access this particular command. So that's what's happening there. Right? So that's the first thing that's happening. So you're going to import these packages. These packages have to be installed on your computer, but that should have been taken care of uh, in the earlier videos. We had Penguin and Pandas and all that kind of good stuff were installed, right? So now I'm creating a variable. So this is a CSV, so we have to read CSV files. I mentioned that in the data structure file, so comma delimited data. So CSV and then the FN is just file name. So this just represents the file name that we're going to work with. You, you can change it when you have new data sets. So this is our file, as I mentioned before. By the way, you could also put this down here. But a lot of times when you start getting code, it's easier to have a variable so you can just change this and keep the rest of the code. So keeping it separate. So this first command, you see what we're going to do is we're going to create a data frame. We're going to call it df for data frame. And we're going to have pandas read the comma delimited file. So that's what read CSV means. And then we're telling it what file name to read. Now the next thing that will happen is we, if we just did this, you wouldn't see anything. So we have to have Jupyter Notebook print out that data frame. So we're going to do df, and it'll print out that, that data frame. Now you can print out just the top part of the, the data frame, or you could print out the last few if you want. It's like head and tail. You can look up those commands in pandas. Uh, but this will just show you, and it'll show you a fair number. Well, we'll run it, and you can see. But we'll show you a fair number of data points and then a break, and then the, the bottom part of the data point. So when you run this, so we're ready to run, so we're going to run it. It's going to think, and when it thinks, it has that asterisk there, and then it shows you some output. So here's our data file, and you can verify this by opening up your comma delimited file in Excel, and this is what you should see. This is our data frame. You see it gives you the first, like, 30 rows, uh, and then spaces, and it gives you sort of, like, probably the last 30. Uh, last 30 rows, right? So that's what it's going to do. So that's our data, and that matches our data file. Now, notice a couple other things I want to point out to you. Uh, Python starts with zero for the for the index. So this is actually the first row is zero. That's important if you're doing special programming stuff or hardcore pro programming stuff. Won't really impact our analyses. But then we have our variables, and notice the variables, the commands will be case sensitive. So in this case, they're going to be all capitalized. It might change depending on your data file, but you can always, and how you create it, but you can always sort of have it dump out the first thing to see what it looks like in the first command, and then you have it. Now the cool thing is, with uh, Jupyter Notebook, is we can just roll right down into a new cell, and we can do uh, our next command. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do something different with this data file. So you'll notice that these commands here are all the same. So 
we're reading in our data file. Now what I'm going to do uh, with this one is we're just going to, if you notice in this data file, we have all four of our uh, response item combinations. So we have hit, miss, correct, rejection, false alarms. Well, two of these are errors. So miss and false alarms are errors. So what if I wanted to do an analysis where I just focused on correct judgments, so hits and correct rejections? Well, we could easily filter this data frame to look at just hits and correct rejections, and that's what we're going to do. So the way we filter that data frame is we're going to create a variable called select, so whatever you want to select. And then I'm putting in, and so these text strings have to match whatever's in your data file, right? So CR is in the data file, hits in the data file. So it has to match that, otherwise you would get an error. And I put this, uh, the item has to be in all caps because uh, your data frame, it's case sensitive. So, and it also sort of explains that is in command and pandas is what it's going to do. So what we're going to do is create a new data frame. We're going to call that data frame two. And what data frame two is going to be equal to is data frame, our first one, and we're selecting item and we're selecting just these levels by using the is in command for hit and correct rejection. And when we print out data frame two, you'll see that it's going to drop out those other ones. So we'll run this. It's going to drop out miss and false alarm. So now we have a new data frame. So now when we do analyses on data frame two, we're just looking at this data that we've uh, selected here, right? So in the next set of commands, okay, so now this set of commands is going to do what we did before, as you see, oh, I should point out that anytime you want, and it's a good idea, to create comments for yourself so that you can later sort of see what you did, you can just use that pound sign uh, and that will allow you to type whatever you want to type in, but it's a command that won't be executed. If you didn't have that pound sign, you would see that that would be a command that would need to be executed. And of course, Python wouldn't know what to do with that command and it would give you an error. So this is just comments for me, for the user to sort of understand what a little chunk of code does. So this is the old stuff, we just did this. Now we're adding some new stuff and this is the analysis of variance command. So you'll notice it's equivalent to like a, a syntax command in SPSS. So we're going to create a variable called AOV, which just stands for analysis of variance. We're using the penguin. We're going to do repeated measures ANOVA. We tell it what the dependent variable is. We want to analyze proportion. And we're going to tell it that we have within subjects variables, tests, and item. And basically, within this package, you can go back and look. You would just have a between subjects IV if you had between subjects designs. Or if you had a mixed design, you would have an entry here for between. You identify the variable within. It couldn't be easier. No coding, no nesting of variables. This is it. And then uh, within this, you're going to tell it that we do have a variable which identi identifies each subject. That's our sub ID. And we're going to do the analysis on data frame two, not one. We want to do data frame two because we filtered data frame two. And then we need a command to print the um, analysis of variance. Otherwise, we wouldn't see the outcome of it. So. Uh, and remember, so AOV is the analysis of variance. We need to print the table out so that we can actually see the outcome. And so when we run this, we're going to get our summary table here. There are ways to sort of clean up and get a prettier table. But here's our test variable. Sum of squares, degrees of freedom, 1, 34, mean square. Here's your F less than 1. This is our uncorrected P. And um, this is a uh, geyser greenhouse corrected P. This is your partial eta squared, uh, and this is the epsilon for the geyser greenhouse correction. If you don't know what that is, you should go look it up, particularly when you're doing repeated measures. We have to correct for violations of sphericity. But here's our item variable, and you can see that that is significant, and even significant after we correct for it. Uh, and then we have a test by item interaction, which is eh, right on the margin there, pretty close, but not significant. So that's our analysis of variance. Now we're going to go for the next step. We are going to actually visualize this. So what if we wanted to see, see our means um, plot it. So you can do this thing. So let me put some, punch some text in here. So this is all the same, but now we have a new command where we're going to bring in the Seaborn package and the Seaborn package allows us to plot things. So this is the old stuff. We're filtering the data set, but the new stuff is, uh, plotting 
with these commands, and you'd have to look up the Seaborn syntax. We're going to create a plot. Uh, we're doing the data frame as the key thing to change. So we're doing data frame two. Uh, on the x variable, we're putting test. Y is our dependent variable, the proportion. Uh, this would be the lines. The lines uh, are going to be our item variable. These are the different markers and sizes of the markers and things like that. The palette, all you can find all that information, all of those variables that you can change by going in the Seaboard package. It's been so long since I've done this, I don't know. And by the way, I don't like memorize any of this stuff. I just have code which does it and then I modify it and look it up if I need to. But this is a nice way to just quickly visualize your data. So if you run this, we're going to get a little graph here that we can sort of see uh, what's going on. And we can sort of see that like, oh, I see where the interaction is coming from because you have a difference here. Looks like there's a much less of a difference there uh, for our NT test, right? So you could, not a publishable quality figure, but uh, certainly something quickly to uh, visualize. What if you just want to see the means in a table? So this is, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to import our packages. All of this is the same. Here's the new stuff below. So we're going to use a group by pandas command. And so we're going to create a, a we're using data frame two. We're using the group by command where we group by our variable test, our variable item. This is our dependent variable and we're aggregating and creating a mean and standard deviation in this round is how many decimal places you want to round to. And so we enter that command. And if we run that, you'll see we get a nice little table here, which has those same data values in there for visualization purposes, right? So that's pretty cool. We're going to create a uh, new data frame. And in this new data frame, we're going to uh, lose a couple of variables, right? So if what if we wanted to focus in and just, like as a, a post hoc analysis, just analyze across test? Well, we can make our item and and in this case, we're also just sort of ignoring response time. We can make it disappear in our third data frame. And how do you do that? Well, you use this command. You create a new data. By the way, this is all the same. But we're going to create a new data frame called data frame three. That's taking data frame two. And we're using this uh, location command in pandas. And you can look this up. But it's basically uh, going to select sub ID, the columns, sub ID, proportion, and test. And the other stuff disappears. And so this command will print out data frame three so we can see what it looks like. And there you go, you have a new data frame that you can analyze and it'll ignore that other variable in effect, right? Because it's just sort of disappeared from our data set. You could always go back to data frame two if you needed to because it's still there. So here what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that analysis for just test. We're going to do an analysis of variance for just test using this command. So all of this is new. And here I put the old command with uh, when we did the analysis of variance above it. So you could sort of see it has item and it has data frame two. So this is the same command, but you'll notice that item's gone. And now we have data frame three. So we can analyze data on this new data frame three. And by the way, this isn't saved. It's just in memory. Um, if you want to save it, you'd have to sort of create a, a file, uh, like another comma delimited file. Um, and then we're going to print it out uh, so you can see what the outcome of the analysis of variance is for just this test variable. It won't surprise you that it's not significant because it wasn't significant in the overall analysis. But here we were able to sort of drop out that variable if we wanted to. In some cases, that's going to be, for 2i2, it's really not a big deal. But for uh, other more complex designs, it's, it's uh, helpful to have that. So those are some examples of some basic data handling kinds of things that you can do uh, in Python. And you could explore more by looking up the Penguin documentation or the Pandas documentation. But that gives you an idea of how this works. And uh, by the way, it also gives you an idea of how Jupyter Notebook works because we could save all of this. So let me save this as sort of demo one. We already have another notebook with that name. And we could open this later. So this would all be here and you can sort of scroll down. That's the nice thing about Jupyter Notebook is you can scroll down. The other thing you can do is you can add what's called markdown. So <clears throat> you can insert a cell and <clears throat> with markdown you use the pound signs for the size of the font but this would be a text in here. Um, so we could sort of describe what's happening in the next cell. So in this next cell we're doing the ANOVA on 
uh, test variable um, collapsing across uh, item, right? So that's what it is. Now what you want to do is to go cell, cell type, markdown, and that will be text. So it looks kind of ugly now, but let's save it. And we can close this notebook and reopen this notebook. And you're going to see that everything's there that we just did, right? It's all there. It's all saved. So you can go back and you can look at, hey, what are what were the analyses? They remain in this notebook. And it's hard to print these notebooks, but you can create a web page. I found that that works. Uh, I haven't really tried printing them out too much, but it's all there. So I now, whenever I want to, uh, like, convert some statistics into text, I'll just open up the Jupyter Notebook and it's there. Oh, and by the way, here's our markdown text, as you can sort of see. The next time you open it up, it'll actually be text that marks each of the cells. So that markdown is really helpful for creating a more visually appealing uh, Jupyter Notebook. Um, so that gives you an example of what you can do in Python using that Penguin uh, package and Pandas package. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do something similar using R. Because as you recall, remember one of the limitations I found is that you could only do uh, two by two repeated measures. Once you add that third variable, the package couldn't handle it. So that's why I converted over to R. And R is actually has basically the same idea or the same functions as Python. Slightly different notation, that's basically it. But a lot of the same principles are going to apply here, uh, why, which is why it's valuable to learn a little bit of basic Python. Also, I think eventually Python is going to replace R altogether as well. So uh, stay tuned for that next video.